everyday people. I have Alexandra. We're going to call her Alex for short today with me. Um, she has done HCG injections and um, you'll be able to see her before and after photo. If you're listening, you can check it out on the show notes of the interview, uh, but you can see she's made quite a difference with her own weight loss journey. Um, I don't know exactly her whole story yet because I don't, it's gonna be all new to me too. So we're gonna, I just saw her before and after picture and I was like, oh, I have to talk to Alexandra. So anyway, we're gonna, we're all gonna hear from her today. So how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Good. <laughs> Excited to be here. Yes, thank you so much. So why don't we, I just like jumping right into it. So okay. I listen to a lot of podcasts and sometimes they'll shoot the breeze for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> can you just get to the real information? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I already got to CrossFit and I didn't even hear any useful information on my drive, you know, so I like to just <laughs> hop into it. Um, why don't you give us just the basics, like your, your age and height, any medical conditions that you've dealt with, things like that? So, yeah, um, right now I am 24. When I started this journey, it was right when I hit 20. Um, I felt like I needed a change, you know. I am 5'1 and a half. The half is important. <laughs> And uh, something that I struggled with is stress-induced narcolepsy. So anytime my heart rate and, and like stress level gets above a certain level, I actually fall asleep. So wow. I was always like really hesitant to work out and stuff because, you know, I don't want to pass out in the middle of a, of a gym sesh. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. I've never even heard of that. That's so fascinating. So is that something you still deal with to this day? Yeah. Yeah. So if I get really, really scared or if, you know, get really, really stressed, I just pass out. It's weird. <laughs> wow. It seems like now you mentioned that you have a job that you're a stockbroker. Yes, I am. It, isn't that stressful or no? <laughs> so, I mean, I what I did to, to make it less stressful is get really well informed about the industry. And when I feel like I know what I'm talking about, it makes it a little easier. <laughs> that actually makes perfect sense. Yeah. So you're just so well versed in industry now. It's not to a level that will induce sleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Those first days were rough, though. <laughs> I bet. Oh, my goodness. Well, just tell us just in a nutshell. I'm sure we'll go into more details about everything, but just your your, your HCG journey in a nutshell, your starting weight, ending weight, size change, those types of things. Oh, yeah. So um, as, as a lot of people do, I tend to eat my emotions, right? <laughs> yeah. So... I went through a really, really tough time, um, actually like ended an engagement and everything and, and kind of let myself, you know, eat my emotions freely. <laughs> yeah. It got to the point where I wasn't even getting on the scale anymore because I was so scared to see the number. I just know that I stopped weighing myself after I hit over 200 pounds. Gotcha. You're like, um, I know it's bad and I just don't want to know anymore. <laughs> yeah. It just made me sad, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> But I turned 20 and I saw, you know, all my friends and sorority sisters having so much fun and being so carefree and I couldn't do the same because I was so self-conscious. So I realized I needed to make a change for me to improve my quality of life. Gotcha. Um, so I can't, I don't exactly know what my starting weight was, but right now I am 145. Wow. Which is a big difference. <laughs> yeah. So 145 and then you were, you think something over 200? At least, at least. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, because being being five one, because I'm five one also. Of course, you've got that extra half inch on me, but <laughs> um, but yeah. So being that we're such little shorties, um, that kind of weight does really add up. Do you do you know what size you were wearing back then by any chance, or like? In I pants? liked uh, elastic a lot. Right. Yeah, I knew you. And <laughs> and handmade clothes. So I I even took the extreme of like going to a like an artist colony where they made their own clothes so I wouldn't have to look at sizes oh like it my just, gosh you're like just don't put a label with a size in it thank you <laughs> and I was like I just want like sustainable stuff I'm a hippie no it's because I, I didn't want to go shopping yeah made me sad yeah no I totally hear that yeah I was thinking like because when I was at my highest at 172 um, I did get higher when I was pregnant, but I figure that doesn't really count, you know, <laughs> so when I wasn't pregnant, my highest was like 172 and I was like a size 16, like that didn't really fit anymore. And that was kind of, yeah, the breaking point for me. I was like, I am not buying a size 18. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you were probably even a little beyond that at that point. Absolutely. So, yeah. So you've basically lost probably around 60 something pounds then it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's drastic. <laughs> that is a huge amount. Yeah. And then not like, what's your size in clothing these days? I'm a size four. Awesome. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> it <laughs> seems like a good size for five, one people. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Healthy. Awesome. That's really good. So, um, so with the 60 pounds, can you tell us how that journey happened? Um, with your HCG, like how many rounds did you do and how was it spread out or whatnot? Yeah. So typically I did a total of four rounds, um, just cause I wanted to take it slow. I did the, the shorter round each time and I wanted to make sure that I had the willpower to keep it off before I did the next one. Right. You know, so I would do one and then I'd wait a year to see if I kept it off the entire year and then I'd do another. So throughout that four year process, I mean, that's how we got here. <laughs> that's amazing. So you basically did it once a year. Is that what you're mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. For just like the three weeks. Exactly. Uh That is so good. Now, I want to ask you a question because most of us women are notoriously impatient when it comes to like wanting to be the weight and the look that we want Mm -hmm. because I am constantly telling women like just wait between your rounds longer. Try to delay it out. And and everyone's like, can I stay on HCG for six months? Will something bad happen? Or like, (laughs) you want to get to your size for tomorrow. So how did you, especially being a young woman too, when you started, like, well, you're still a young woman, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, how did (laughs) you have... Being so young, yeah. Yeah, but how did you have that self-control? Like, what what was your thought process? Like, how did you really kind of make yourself take those breaks, even though after each round you were still, you know, overweight for the rest of that year? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's a good question. When I was a kid, I was super chubby, like super chubby. Um, and then I slimmed out kind of as I, I reached the end of high school and then, you know, gained all of it back. But what I did during that time is I would go with my mom to Weight Watchers meetings. I'd go with my mom to Jenny Craig, um, you know, meetings and, and get all the food and all that. I tried all the fad diets with her, trying to get to somewhere that felt healthy and I would lose weight and then I'd gain it all back or more. Right. And I realized that the quick fix stuff, doing it very quickly wasn't working. And for something to change, something else needed to change. Right. So I figured I might as well do something that's very different than anything I'd done before to get a different result. Good. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to talk more about that, about your maintenance in a little bit, like in between, if you don't mind. Um, but yeah, I think that's such a good example. You guys um, out there listening like really, really think about that because um, I didn't actually take breaks as long as you, but mine were definitely longer than the average. So Mm -hmm. I usually, I think I pretty much like three to four months between each round for the most part. And again, yeah, same type of reason. Just I wanted to like my body to have time to recover, to be stable and healthy before, because you know, with the injections, it's still, it's an extreme protocol, you know? It is. Um, As much as it's amazing. I mean, the whole blog (laughs) is about it. I fully believe in it, but it still has to be done in the right way, you know? And um, it does seem like when people can approach it with a, a little bit more of a patient attitude like that, um, it really seems to work so much better, you know? And that's yeah. amazing too for you for maintaining between those rounds. And it sounds like maybe we can get more a little more in a minute too about your history that it's dealt, you've dealt with weight issues for much of your life. Absolutely. So it's not like you were just this skinny mini for like your whole life and then just Mm -hmm. had a little blip in your journey. So obviously it's been a struggle. So for someone who's had a struggle for a lot of their life and then been able to take those long breaks and maintain in between. I mean, I think that says a lot, you know. Thank you. Yeah. um, So why don't don't we, I mean, how did you find out about the protocol? Did you, did you mention that? From my mom. (laughs) Oh, So. Um, apparently, so my mom grew up in Mexico City, and apparently that is their solution, you know, for, for any time somebody gains a little weight, you know, you go to the doctor, you get your injections, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, so it's a very, like, oh, yeah, just go get your shots, like, very, very casual thing. Okay. Um, but we had to, because it wasn't exactly, like, approved of or, or really well known here in the States, we had to, like, you know, go to Mexico, do the protocol, and then, you know, come back. Okay. So. I remember being about 17 or 18 and seeing her go down to Mexico for about six weeks and then come back. Um, and she, you know, was, was transformed. Oh and after that, <laughs> you know, seeing her transformation, I was like, well, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Back of mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So that's a very interesting introduction to it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. probably uh, not the best way, but you know, <laughs> we wow. all get here. <laughs> That, that is very interesting. Now, when you were doing the injections, so you did injections for all four of your rounds, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so for dosage for you, I always like to ask about this. Was there, so did you have to change your dosage as you went and what dose was good for you? 
you know, I didn't change my dosage. Yeah. I haven't really, I'm going to be honest, I haven't done much experimentation. Yeah. I just kind of did the standard one. Yeah. Was it like, do you know if it was 150 IU or do you know what it was? Um, this is going to sound really lame, but I, it would go to the, the 25 mark on the, okay. in, on the, on the needle. And then did you mix it yourself or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do you like 5,000 IU plus five mLs? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So if you were actually one of those higher dosage ladies, like 250 oh, wow. IU. Oh, wow. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty high. But you know what? I mean, everybody is unique. That's the thing, you know? So, and that worked for you okay for the whole time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was only uh, one round where I, I kind of played around with it a little bit, but it was because I was also exercising during it. I found out that didn't work for me. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, you know, since you mentioned that, why don't, why don't you talk about that a little bit more? Because I actually do get asked that question a lot about oh. can you exercise on HCG? That's why I have a four-part series on it. <laughs> but tell me your experience. So with HCG, I always am a lot more productive and just like strangely a lot more happier of a person, right? Because I can get so many things done and I never run out of energy. Yeah. Um, so it made me like crave working out. But when I think of working out, what I think of is like lifting and lifting heavy, yeah. not, you know, like a casual walk on the treadmill. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I would go in the gym and try to lift heavy and then be starving afterwards because my body craved protein to recover. And then I didn't know how to supplement it. And I, I hadn't done enough research to really know how to how to approach that, really. So gotcha. So you're like, ended up. <laughs> Yeah, this is probably not the best time to do this. I can wait, you know, three more weeks and then right, <laughs> do exactly. it after. Did you find with that a little experiment that you did, like, did you cheat from that or did you just kind of like wait it out, but you knew you didn't want to keep feeling like that? I got really cranky. And that's when I realized, like, I'm never cranky on this. Like, this is the only thing that's changed. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so that's actually really good advice um, for some of you guys out there, too, that because um, we feel all different on HCG. It is a hormone, right? It's like if someone's in your pregnant, some women feel like elated and happy and some women feel depressed. It's just like, who knows? Oh, it's yeah. interacting with all your other hormone yeah. levels, you know? But if you aren't feeling well on HCG, you can kind of troubleshoot and that can't, could be one thing. So we all assume of like, oh, well, exercise is good and burning more calories must be good right yeah. <laughs> you know but in some cases it's just kind of too much with yeah. you know, you're eating so little your body's forced to like breaking down fat molecules in order to use it for energy it's like more work you know than just eating yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then it's... trying to like build itself back up at the same time like yeah, yeah. no <laughs> too much <laughs> yeah so yeah that's just something to keep in mind like how the frequency of it and the intensity it's mm -hmm. kind of funny that you mentioned about the heavy lifting. Um, anybody who watches me at all knows I talk about CrossFit all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, and actually I wanted to mention that, you know, when you go to these workouts, they're different all the time. Like, you know, so some days it's like a little bit more aerobic kind of thing where you're doing like maybe lots of push-ups and pull-ups and like squats without weight or something. That might yeah. be one day. But then you might do a day where it's like five sets of five of like back squats or front squats right and yeah. then that is meant because there's only five you know it's supposed to be as pretty much as heavy as you can do five of them where you can't do a sixth you know yeah you're supposed to go to failure and yeah <laughs> and i totally notice this is off hcg of course um i get ravenous after heavy lifting days Yes. I do. Like, I don't get that from aerobic ones. Like, I can, of course, eat, but I don't. But after lifting, if I don't eat, I am like, I am starving. <laughs> <laughs> and I can eat more, too, and not gain weight. You know, like, I need, yeah. my body is saying, hey, I need more right now. You yeah, know? And, and I think that's what was happening to me. My body was like, hey, you don't have enough for this. But I didn't know how to be like, okay, let me choose this or not this. And I didn't know with the protocol what would mess it up. And I was right. too scared to do anything. So Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like you said, it's such a short time, especially you were doing only three week rounds. Even mm -hmm. honestly, six weeks is it's not that long to take a break, mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah, it honestly, probably helped my muscles recover. <laughs> yeah, I know. You come back feeling all fresh, you know? <laughs> well, good. Thanks for sharing that because um, I do get that question a lot. And um, I know that we're all anxious to like do all the things, you know, all the good things for ourselves. But really the best thing you can do for yourself, I find sometimes is actually to, to split things up. And, you know, HCG, the point of that is for weight loss, you know, 
heavy lifting exercise, really our, our focus of it should be to build our metabolism and get strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not really about weight loss. So just if you shift your mindset on the purpose of exercise, you realize like, oh, that doesn't necessarily, you know, fit. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I will say I interviewed, do you mind if I share this? Um, I interviewed a gal that works at a weight loss, a HCG weight loss clinics a few interviews ago. We'll link to it in the show notes for you guys. I can't remember right now. But she did mention that um, they found that when people did just a little bit of resistance training, not like super heavy lifting and stuff, but just a little bit while on a round, that it did seem to preserve muscle better oh. on the round. So, but just within reason, we just, we get carried yeah. away, you know, so. Yeah, I tend to live with my ego. So I feel like if I was doing the small resistance, I'd be like. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I hear you on that. <laughs> Um, so, so how long has it been now since you've been maintaining since your last round? Since my last round, it's been about seven months. Wow. Yeah. That's yep. fantastic. Now, when you followed phase two, um, with the, the low calorie diet portion, um, did you do like their traditional 500 calorie diet or did you tweak yes. things at all? I did do the traditional 500 calorie. What I did, and this is actually something that I didn't think of much when I, the first three rounds that I did, I kept starchy veggies in there. Okay. Like um, what? Like, like green beans, for example. Okay. Right. Because I found these microwavable ones were, that were so easy and they didn't impact my weight loss. I didn't even like think twice, Nice. but that the most recent round I kept like hitting these plateaus and struggling and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I realized at the minute that I switched out the green beans, like all of a sudden all my issues went away. Oh. So it may have been that we're like hitting where I need to be like more consistent, you yeah. know, or, or really sticking to the protocol more, but, um, it was very interesting. Oh, no, that is. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, cause it could be because you were, yeah, you were getting lighter. You, you mm -hmm. just can't get away with as much. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate, but you know, like when you're heavier, you know, even just off of HCG, it's like your metabolism is just higher because you weigh more so you can eat. Yeah. 1700 calories and lose weight but then if you're 120 pounds usually that's you'll not, not so much lose weight. <laughs> you know because <laughs> you're just just kind of unfair but oh that's interesting so but the first few rounds it was fine How oh yeah it, it was totally fine there was no plateaus there were no blocks even you know the the plateau that you get about halfway through yeah. didn't even happen i was so what? elated yeah and then um yeah that, that most recent round i was like what am i doing wrong <laughs> Gotcha. Did you actually track your weight on each round? Mm -hmm. I did. I actually have a, a an app where I write down every single day's weight every through every round and through the six weeks after the round as well. Oh, great. Maybe later, like, you don't, we don't need all the stats, but is there a way we could just get, like, your starting and ending of each round or something? Yeah, let's see. We here. can put it in the, um, in the show notes later. I was just curious okay. about, people always like to know, like, oh, how much weight did you lose on each round and, you know... How about like loading and stuff? Did, when you would load, did you just kind of, how much would you usually gain on loading? Usually about three to four pounds, yeah, to be honest with you. Um, the first three rounds I, I dirty loaded. Yeah. <laughs> just binge ate everything in sight. Cause it, especially with the first and second rounds, it kind of matched my lifestyle at the time. Right. So I was like, let's do this. I have permission. Uh huh. Um, but the most recent one, I kind of looked at, at your philosophy of clean loading, actually, okay. um, and started looking more into what that translated into as far as like meals and, and weight gain and, and just where you end up. Yeah. So I, I tried that and I didn't gain as much weight. I gained about a pound and a half. Oh, wow. Cool. And still eating like all the bacon. All right. The avocados. Still lots of fat, right? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And then when you would lose weight with um, the first few days of VLCD, probably at least on the last round, you probably lost all your loading weight after the first day, I'm assuming. Yeah. Probably more. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about for the first few rounds with the dirty loading with the three to four, did that, did you get that all off in one day or was it like two days? It's usually about two days. Yeah. Um, I would typically lose about eight to 10 pounds in the first week. Gotcha. And then the second week and third week would be a little slower of a pace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's traditional. Cool. Oh, that's good. For you guys, if, you, um, if you're if you wondering, I'll, we'll have a link in the show notes to the clean loading uh, blog post article she's talking about. But if you go to hcgchica.com slash loading, 
I have all my different loading posts there and you'll see it in there, but we'll link to the specific one um, in the show notes. So how did you feel about the two? Like, it sounds like for you, the, the dirty loading wasn't really a big deal because you maintained between, so you, maybe you're not a sugar addict like me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it sounds like it was okay, but just what do you think about now that you've done both? Um, it made the first days so much easier to do clean loading. Yeah. Because those first few days, just the, the stark difference, I felt like I was like grounded. Gotcha. <laughs> like know? a rude awakening. Yeah, like like yeah, like a little kid you send like, into the room without supper, right? Like yeah, yeah I was just like, so upset so, like, all the from time. Cakes to celery, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's leftovers, so I would just like watch my friends or my family like eat the leftovers, just <laughs> so upset with life. Gonna but you. <laughs> the second round, um, not the second round, the the fourth round, the second loading type. Um, it was, yeah, it was a completely different experience because the leftovers were still, you know, somewhat healthy compared to the alternative. Yeah. So I wasn't as, like, you know, angsty about it, I guess. <laughs> Not so psychologically, like, ah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I actually good. enjoyed the transition rather than, like, resenting it. Oh, that's good. I feel like, you know, it's, like, it's not, like, it's required, right, to, to do that. But, like you said, it made it easier. And, and sometimes I just think there's scenarios where, it can make a difference in your success depending on where you are at psychologically and emotionally. Cause you know, you try to plan ahead, right? But it's yeah. like when you start around, something might happen that's upsetting or, you know, you just, you can't plan everything. So it's like being that that's the case when you try to engineer things a certain way, I think it's going to make it easier to not kind of cheat or fall off the wagon right away. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And honestly, your struggles that you mentioned and that you talked about with, you know, binge eating and, and not being able to control that, that's what influenced me to try the clean loading because I would notice that kind of in the week and a half coming up to my loading days, I would like just eat that entire time gotcha. <laughs> because I knew like it was permission was coming to do that, you know? Because you like, because you know you're starting a diet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when it, it instead became, you know, more of like a slight lifestyle change versus like this event of binge eating it was it was a lot better psychologically That's so good. your story resonated oh cool <laughs> thank you I'm glad to hear that um yeah it, it's funny I just I realized I guess I'm just an extreme personality or something because yeah I realized even um that when I would load dirty and you guys when I say load dirty we're talking about just having like sugar and just pizza whatever and ice loading. cream and yeah just like, <laughs> and, and and in truth, it's I've even read this on forums. People are like, you have to load dirty. Like, you have to load on, like, baked goods because Dr. <laughs> Simeon said whipped cream and pastries. <laughs> like, you know, and it's like if you don't, you're not going to reset your metabolism. <laughs> it's, um, so there's sometimes that mentality that, like, you have to. And so in your head, you're, like, justifying it, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but for me, I did find that I even would, like, even if I didn't need to lose weight, it was like, I would be like, oh, maybe I should plan a round of HCG. And because you're yeah. actually thinking you want to load for two days. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I've been there. Like, so not even sane. <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to plan to do a six-week diet of eating 500 calories so that I can have a license to not feel guilty for eating two days of, like, just so much horrible sugary stuff. <laughs> You know, exactly. not feel bad about it. That's when I knew, like, something is wrong with this picture. Yep. <laughs> That's just not sane. So, yeah. So, it's like, once I took that away, then it was like, oh, then your true motives shine through, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you don't try to plan stupid things, like, like doing a <laughs> diet when you don't need one or whatever. <laughs> and I feel like that also helps with uh, sticking with it, right? Because if you're planning your diet around two or three days of eating yes it's gonna suck once the diet happens right I know. <laughs> the and transition's gonna be rough oh my gosh yeah and also what you said too about when you know like oh I have this plan to be like super good or lose weight in a week or 10 days so it's like subconsciously like you said you just kind of start eating way worse than you would you yeah. know, and you're really defeating your own progress then, obviously. <laughs> exactly, because all you're doing is losing the weight you gained the past week, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm going to go two steps back right now so that I can end up in the same spot I was, like, next week <laughs> after I fix it. Oh, wow. <laughs> crazy. 
Yeah, um, but clean okay, eating. cool. So you did the 500 calorie, and that's interesting about the green beans. Thanks for sharing that too. So, so sometimes you guys might find that too if you do altered protocols, like the 800 calorie or the 500 calorie with different foods. Like when you're heavier, it may be fine, and then maybe you hit a wall, like. Alexandra did and then you can maybe just readjust and because it is true your body's not as forgiving when you're when you're thinner so <laughs> you can play around with that um so do you, is there any more like to the story with your history you said you were kind of chubby your whole life like what do you think were some of the factors surrounding that um I mean I've always kind of kind of eaten for emotion I was uh gotcha. I was a little bit weird as a kid you know, the kid that didn't really talk to anyone, just, like, sat in the corner and read. Oh. And that oh. <laughs> that kid's easy to pick on. So instead of, like, confronting people or, you know, dealing with it or talking about it, which I was encouraged to do, um, I just ate about it <laughs> for gotcha. a while. And that just made it worse. So it became this vicious cycle until, yeah, something needed to change. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that seems to be kind of what a lot of, a lot of people have dealt with in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. It's cool how, though, as you get older, you know, just like what you've done, you you process things and you realize, like, you want to make a change. And you've made a really permanent change to be maintaining like that in between, you know. Yeah, it's to the point that uh, some of my sorority sisters even, like, I'll, I'll see them now and they don't recognize who I am. Really? Just because the transformation's been so significant. That's awesome. <laughs> now, so it's a little I'm awkward to be... <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I'm curious, when you first um, kind of lost all that weight, did you have any, like, transition period as far as, like, I mean, did you feel comfortable in your new body right away, or did you have a process to go through with that? Oh, I loved it, but I think, uh, I think I, <laughs> I'm one of those few people with, like, reverse dysmorphia, I think. Yeah. So even when I was at my heaviest, I'm like, I'm awesome, oh! right? <laughs> after and be like what have I done you know <laughs> but in the moment I always thought it was great so when I would lose the weight I would just be like wait what like this is me <laughs> yeah gotcha wow how, how did, so tell us what's your secret to such great body image <laughs> I you know I I wish I could tell you and sometimes I, I really regret it because like I wish somebody would have told me like hey you should maybe like do something different <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't always work out in my favor but yeah eh. That is Blessing so and a curse. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's a good thing. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I never felt that confident about myself when I was overweight, but I did definitely notoriously underestimate my size. Like, so when I would go clothing shopping, I yep. always picked out clothes that I thought would fit and they were always too, way too small. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so I did, I viewed myself as smaller than I really was. So... <laughs> Same. Yeah, I would. Uh, I actually made it a practice. I'd pick out the size I thought I was, and then I'd pick out one that was two or three sizes above it, just like just in case, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, whoops, the bigger one fits. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that's good. So you haven't really dealt with that too much then. Um, why don't we move on to like during phase three and stuff, since that's been you've been so successful with the maintaining and all that. Mm -hmm. How did you do your phase threes? Let's start with that. So the first three times, yeah, it was kind of a crapshoot. I would maintain my, I didn't realize you had to ramp up. I, I didn't do my research very well. So, you know, with calories, you have to do 700 and then 900, or, you know, to an extent until you get back up to a good range. Um, obviously, you know that. But um, I didn't originally, I, so it's, <laughs> I didn't do that on my P3s either, which is why they were rocky. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was so rocky. I would look at the scale and be like, what did I change that could have caused this number to go up? How do I get it back down? And so it was a lot of like second guessing myself and trial and error right. um, until I finally found a, a place where I found homeostasis, right? Gotcha. gotcha. Um, this last one, I made it more plant-based and that helped. Nice. It helped me to remain a, a lot more like consistent. That's great. So what, it, can I ask more specifically like what I don't know what you ate or <laughs> yeah so for example instead of using like regular milk like cow's milk yeah um, I would use cashew milk gotcha right and you know instead of eating a ton of meat I would use like pea protein gotcha. or you know different things like that so everything that I ate was very plant-based gotcha um and very like well measured <laughs> for the first time <laughs> so you were actually kind of tracking your calories and macros more exactly exactly gotcha. and kind of more recently ever since actually you released your p3 to life 
program? Yeah. That's what I've been using. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't yeah. I didn't even know you had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. You little sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> like hiding things for me. <laughs> well, now that now that program, you must be kind of adapting it a little cuz that's actually yes. more of a high meat protein um program, but you can still probably work. So how are you utilizing it? I'm curious about that. Yeah, so uh, like you said, I've been adapting a lot of the the recipes that you put in there to yeah. make them a little bit higher calorie, a little bit more maintenance versus you know right because you're in maintenance food. too, right? Yeah. Um. So like your your chia pudding, for example, like I'll add an extra protein scoop or right. you know just just little Sorry. things. Um. I gotta say, my favorite is a pad thai though. Oh really? Miracle noodles or bay. Awesome. <laughs> it makes it like a nice big meal, you know? It does. It does. So. That's I think that's what I liked most about your program is that I feel like I'm eating so much, but it's it's still super healthy. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's great, and that's nice to co hear coming from you too, since you're really in phase four. Mm -hmm. um, and like I and like you said, you, you're adjusting it a little bit, but just that the portion sizes are generous. Then oh oh absolutely, absolutely. it's more than I would have made for myself like volume wise. But then you look at like the the stats behind it, like the calories, the macros, and it's it's awesome, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and then the proofs in the pudding, right? So like when you wake up and you weigh yourself, things are okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's taken the thinking out of it, and I still get to eat awesome awesome food, right? Um, like that cream of mushroom that's with coconut milk. Yes, yes. Awesome. You wouldn't you would never be able to tell. Cool. And then I get a ton of broccoli with it, so it's just yeah, very filling, very good. Good. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that was totally an unexpected testimonial of the program. Thank you. That's thank so you. fantastic. That's great. And I, I liked that you talked about just the comparison to past P3s too, because that's kind of what made me realize that it was needed. It is. Yeah. It's because I was like you. Like I, it was rocky. Like I did maintain in the end, but it was rocky. It was so much guesswork. It was really stressful. Half of P3, you spend the whole day being like, okay, I need to correct today, or or why, why isn't it going so well? It's going up. Let me try to figure out why and what I should eat today, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh. it's like in this transition period, if I run around the block, will it hurt or help? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, I just felt like, you know, we need, and then I would interview, you know, I've been doing all these interviews a long time now. We're in the episodes of, you know, I'm between 50 and 60 now. And I would just notice that, hey, you know, every time someone is maintaining and did well in phase three, they pretty much always tell me that they gradually raise their calories. And usually, like, the dairy and nuts thing got left out till later in general. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, hmm, there's a pattern here. <laughs> and it's not what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's true. In the in the first couple rounds, the first thing I would go to is cheese. Like I do the exact protocol and then add the the calorie worth in cheese. Right. And that's probably not the hard. best way. To, <laughs> <laughs> probably not the best way to go about it. Yeah, but that's the thing is we you know none of us can be blamed. It's like we we've been through the low carb revolution and we're like, hey, I can have a jar of cashews. And I'm good because it's low carb or, or the cheese. And then once I started like actually planning the program and like getting into macros, like, whoa, this tiny <laughs> little bit of like nuts has 250 calories. It's like, you know, and when you're trying to gradually introduce in P3 and you ate just a thousand calories of almonds, I mean, you would not be content. <laughs> No, no. And that's something that I thought was brilliant from your program too, was the nutritional yeast. I'd never heard of it before your program. Cool. Uh, so to make it like taste like cheese, but then not have the calorie count. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to get that kind of cheesy flavor, huh? That's mm -hmm. cool. That's good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for that. So, but you did make it work, just to be clear, in your previous yeah. phase threes, which is mm -hmm. good to know, you know. So when things did kind of, when it was rocky, like how did you handle that? Did you do correction days or I how did. did you, and did the, and those work for you? Yeah, so once I got in the right mindset, they worked. So the first time I tried a correction day, I tried an apple day where you okay. eat like six apples and, and right. throughout the entire day drink a lot of water. Okay. But my mentality at the time was how much can I eat? Like let me eat the biggest apples I can find. <laughs> gotcha. Yes, <'cause> it's a, <laughs> gotcha. 
<laughs> right? And so once I, I realized, I was like, well, that didn't work. Like, I ate the apples. And then one of my friends was like, yeah, but, like, they're monstrous. So <laughs> It's really more like you ate 12. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I had to get in the mindset of, like, what is my actual goal here? Am I trying to continue the same lifestyle patterns that caused me to get here? Or am I really wanting to make a change? And when I decided my goal was to make a change and improve my life, then I got, you know, the medium-sized apples, and all of a sudden it worked. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. I, I totally understand that mentality, though. <laughs> totally get that. <laughs> so you would actually do some apple days in phase three, then, for correcting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, actually, because usually people usually only use those on phase two. So that's that's cool to hear. Oh, and then did you know. ever do any, like, <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I think it's interesting. And then did you ever do any, like, of the steak days for phase three where you you fast and then eat a steak at night and an apple? No. 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 So just um, the apple days. I, I didn't have the willpower. That's actually why I chose the apple days, so I could I could do it Still over time. Still the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I understand. It's... Yeah, totally. But that's cool because you, you made that work for you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> with phase three now, with it being kind of rocky at the beginning and such on other rounds, um, because I try to tell this to people, like, especially without the P3 to Life program, it can be rocky and really volatile. And that, mm -hmm. that's normal um, when you don't have, like, a really strategic plan. And it yeah. doesn't mean that you won't succeed. It just, it's just, it's like that the first week, but then usually it stabilizes out. So how did that, did that happen for you? Or what was, like, the pattern there that you could give people an example of? Yeah, so when it was rocky... I would try my best to, to go about and, and see what would happen. Um, what I found was my body would gain weight really quickly, but also lose weight really quickly in the first like three or four weeks. Gotcha. So, I mean, you get into this, this kind of dangerous pattern if you don't have a strategic plan of, oh, well, I'll lose it really quickly and it can really run away from you before you even realize it. That's so true. I think with my first round, I let myself get like five pounds and then I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like we can't let this run any further. Um, you know, I just did this program be ashamed to, to mess it up like that right so say when that would happen you would like be five pounds up you would do an apple day mm -hmm. and then what would you do because i'm sure it took more than just one apple day to fix absolutely it. so how was then what happened <laughs> so i would um kind of cut back of course on on what i'd been doing um it would usually be like a couple of days where i would maintain and then i'd start gaining so then i'd go back to what i was doing the couple days i was maintaining um, which is very similar to the protocol, maybe add like one or two things in. Okay. Um, and once I did that for a couple of days, saw myself getting back to the same level, and then I just, you know, maintain as, as appropriate. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. That, I mean, that's essentially kind of what I do in everyday life now, and probably you too. If I don't mm -hmm. know if you've had fluctuations in, in between your years, but I would yeah. assume, I mean, everyone, yeah. you know, <laughs> we're not perfect here, people. <laughs> Maintaining means that we make corrections without it running away from us to like 20 pounds worth, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right, like so. my birthday weekend is going to come around. I'm going to have a slice of cake, maybe have a drink or two, right. and that's going to cause a fluctuation, but then you're good right. for the next week. And <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, and yeah, like you said, learning to have the right mentality about correction days and not being afraid of them, I think mm -hmm. is, is truly, yeah, is really helpful. Yeah. So with your this last phase three then where you did more strategic and you actually kind of counted your calories and macros and you did the plant more plant based. Um, mm -hmm. So it was more smooth with your weight, you think, then a lot more. It was a lot more consistent cool. um, and a lot more stable. And I could see like the direct impact because I would I was very strategic about like keeping everything the same, but only adding one thing different. Gotcha. And so if I saw that that caused me to go up, I just would take it right back out. That's smart. What did you have any foods like that that did cause that you could pinpoint? Oh, that's a problem right now. Dairy every time. Every time. Gotcha. <laughs> it's it's a common one. Yeah. Yep. Now, yep. how about now? Now that phase three is several months ago, are you able to have dairy sometimes, or does it still cause a pretty big gain? Or I'm able to have dairy. Um, I choose to have it pretty sporadically, just because I know you know what it what it can do for me. Right. Um, and. Honestly, since I switched over to a cashew milk, I, I prefer it at this point. Awesome. So. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. But you can kind of tolerate a little bit in here and there. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah, I find that, you guys, this is honestly the truth because that's the other thing, too. Part of why we get so terrified in phase three sometimes is because we'll ha ha be having these volatile weight issues. We'll eat some dairy or nuts or something, and our weight's like up two pounds. You're like, oh, my gosh, is this my life now? 
like every time I have something like this, is my weight going to go up two pounds? But really not. Phase three is like this weird anomaly. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's yeah. just your body's readjusting after all the weight loss. I don't know all the science, but we just, we've seen it enough to know that what you're having trouble with now, you will likely be able to have in another three, four weeks without having that same reaction with your body. So that's true. So just don't panic. <laughs> like, uh, for example, have you heard of Halo Top? I'm sure you've heard of it. Oh, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Tell me about your feelings. <laughs> um, I'm madly in love with Halo Top. Yeah. Because I, before this, my, my thing was ice cream. Like, even how I would study for finals before, you know, starting to get healthy was I would get my pint of ice cream, my energy drink, and I, that's how I would study. Yeah. It's awful. Awful practice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Halo Top kind of lets me have my cake and eat it, too. Nice. So I, I get a pint about once a week, and I don't see a difference. Awesome. So. What's your favorite flavor? Lemon cake. Lemon cake? I don't think I've heard of that one. Is that a newer one? I don't think so. Okay. Well, it's been around I for like a, a couple area. months. We only have like three or four flavors in my store. There's there 12. There must be more. Oh, there's 12? <laughs> it's okay because you know what? I can't handle eating it. So that's my really? story. It's what just, happened? It's too good. It's too good. <laughs> so, okay. okay, you guys. So you guys know what we're talking about, Kate. Because some of you may be able to handle this, okay? It's called Halo Top. Halo Top. It's ice. It's like way healthier ice cream. I don't honestly know how they do it because it, it's it's a mixture. The sweetener is there's a little bit of sugar, but then most of the su sweetener is erythritol, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and as you guys know, erythritol is a sugar-free sweetener. Your body does not absorb it as calories or carbs. So, and they make it like with some milk protein um, yeah. in there. So it's like a light cream, and they still use eggs and everything, but they whip it so much that if you, it's it's literally lighter. So it's like physically less ice cream, gotcha. but it, it doesn't look like it. But the volume is this bigger. Exactly. So it like, it'll look like a pint, right? Yeah. But it weighs about a third of the weight of a normal pint of ice cream. Gotcha. So the calories are just like way less. Yeah, so it's uh, 240 calories a pint for my lemon cake <laughs> See? And that's like a totally like great dessert, you know? Yeah. So I think for a lot of people, like, when, you, and you need to wait to phase four for this, you guys, because it does have yeah. a little bit of sugar. But it's just very small, like she's saying it. It's, so it's kind of like you're getting the, I mean, I felt like it tasted like real ice cream. Yeah, yeah, it Too. does. Like, I when I had it, see, the reason I can't have it is because that was my previous trigger binge food ice cream oh okay it yeah it was yeah and so yeah. i got Same. it one day at the store my son and i because actually he doesn't eat sugar either just because it makes him crazy <laughs> <laughs> so we so i saw this new product someone told us we bought the birthday cake flavor oh my gosh mm. yeah and we're like okay let's try this you know and then i get in my husband's truck with my son it was just us, us two and i don't even have a spoon you know and i'm like oh man i really want to have it now you know so i'm like digging in his dirty like pens and I find this old wooden spoon <laughs> I'm like let's use this <laughs> and like that first bite I had actually mm -hmm. I talk about this in the p3 to life coaching section just for people who have a real sugar addiction problem I felt like fireworks went off in my brain and like yes. it took me I mean it tasted like the real thing it and does I haven't had real ice cream in, in years and I was like oh <gasps> And we ate the whole thing together, and I was like, we can't ever buy this again. <laughs> because I wanted to go back to the store and buy, like, three more pints, like, right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's dangerous. Like, my fiancé, I served it to him, and he didn't know the difference. Like, that's that was the real test. He didn't yes. know it wasn't real ice cream, and he mm. won't eat anything diet. <laughs> wow. See, so there's the proof in the pudding. So if you're a person who can have dessert in moderate amounts, then you will love that. Yeah. But if it sets off the dopamine trigger, then... Then just yeah. stay away. Stay away. Because, I, like, I have my phase three smoothies, and they never cause me to feel that way. Like, I don't... Because I, I, they taste yummy, but they don't taste like real ice cream, you know? That mango one, though? You like that one? <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's good. That's my favorite. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, that's good. So it's like, you guys, there are things you can do later in phase four and maintenance, depending on your inner makeup and what you can handle um, mm -hmm. to have treats and have things, you know, like, so in general now, how do you eat? Are you still eating more plant based? Um, yeah. So I what I realized I had to do personally is I had to change the way that I thought about eating. Um, so before I came from 
like what can I get away with right, right? and now I look first at as like an expression of self-love which sounds like super <laughs> you know new agey but it's like an expression of self-love like if I was making a meal for somebody else what would I want to do to nourish them yeah and just as we are like selfless for other people like I want to be selfless selfish I guess for myself yeah um, so that's my mentality when I when I start prepping meals is what is the best love that I can give myself and my body um, whether it's plant-based or or has a little bit of meat in there I, I look that health just like nourishing first. yourself though exactly yeah. that's great that's yeah that's such a good perspective you know and I think it takes maturity and time to to do that to view it that way you know because mm -hmm. our I think our relationship with food is just so complex you know mm -hmm. like you yeah. said it's like sometimes we eat our emotions or there's just so many layers to why and when we've eaten and what we've eaten and it can can be hard to like unpick pick it apart you know and make it into something more whole and more healthy yeah yeah it took a lot of uh, introspection because you know you can read anything about diets and and you know this like you can there's all these articles it's all you have to do is do a google search right you'll be inundated yeah but you need to look at yourself and what works for you personally yeah. it's gonna be different for everybody yeah no it's so true yeah I, um even just with like both like mentally and emotionally and digestively speaking mm -hmm. you know like i know right now it was like paleo it, and paleo is still popular but yeah. then like now the latest thing is ketogenic um but so and paleo is still popular you know it's still uh -huh. too but even when paleo first became like a big thing um i kind of for me because i have different food sensitivities right away i could never actually do it exactly because mm -hmm. I, I don't do too well with nuts um and i was actually off of um yeah, the sugar thing, right? Because so they allow like natural sugars. And so it is so good that whenever you read information, you always kind of compare it to kind of what you know about yourself. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to modify it, you know, and find yeah. those little tweaks, you know. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any just main tips for anyone else out there that's considering doing the protocol or who maybe has struggled with doing it successfully? Like, what do you think are the most important things for advice? I think uh, as far as advice, that's a good question. I would say make it fun for yourself rather than making it like, oh, I have to eat this or I have to do this for this amount of time. Yeah. Make it fun for yourself somehow. So I would invite my uh, fiance, he was then my boyfriend, and we would cook together, right? All my meals for, for the next week of, of the very low calorie diet. So we'd be nice. sitting there like chopping veggies and just having a great time, nice. right? Um, so if you wanna like bring your friends into it, but make it fun somehow. Um, I know a friend of mine that got started on it after seeing my transformation, um, she started incorporating like family recipes, but modifying them to meet the, the low calorie protocol. Very cool. Um, so like ceviche, for example. Yeah. Right, like taking the fish and the lime juice and then all the little veggies. Nice. So just make it fun. Gotcha. I like that. That's really good <laughs> advice. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with me today. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm kind of fangirling. <laughs> no, it was, no, it was awesome. I really, yeah, because when I saw your, your picture on Instagram, I'll hopefully if it's okay with you, I'll put that one. Oh, absolutely. In the show notes for you guys to see. And because um, there's just some people that you see, I'm just going to give you a compliment sometimes you see a person and they just look like a person who's never been overweight and that's what you look like to me <laughs> there's just certain things where you're like you just don't have any like residue from like being overweight like <laughs> like i have a little excess skin or like just you know you might have loose skin or something but you just yeah. think, wow she looks like someone who's just always been thin and always looked that amazing you know and then when i saw your pictures like what Wow, you've made a huge transformation. Well, thank you. That is a huge compliment. Um, I think it's a journey, but it, it had to be an internal one before it could show on the external, right? Exactly. Yeah, because it just doesn't stick otherwise. Yeah. You know, it, you have to do it for yourself. Like, it just... Yeah. Honestly, just about almost anything, you have to do at least partially for yourself, you know? Exactly, or else you'll lose motivation, right? Yeah. If you're doing it for somebody else, you guys fight in the middle of it, like, bummer, right? There's yeah. your motivation. I know, as soon as it gets hard, you know? I mean, this is unrelated, but my husband, he's like a musician. I mean, he can play any instrument. He's really, really good. And I've tried, like, 
three times to learn to play guitar, like to like get into music. I sing and stuff, but like, you know, just like learn an instrument. But I'm just so not passionate about, I'm not auditory. I'm a very visual person. So for me, I love listening to music, but so yeah, I'm like trying in secret to like learn these guitar lessons, like so I could surprise him, you know, but it just didn't last. Cause I just, I just don't love instruments enough <laughs> exactly it didn't come from you right it didn't come from exactly. your genuine passion yep so I just so. I just can't make this stick but I can crack it so <laughs> that I'm passionate about <laughs> well that's what matters right you're doing something that you like that you're happy about yes that's yes. what makes a difference and it keeps me fit so you know he's hey like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway well oh you guys and also since she did mention the p3 to life program in case you're wondering um for those of you who don't know you can find that at p3tolife.com, p3tolife.com, and um, it's a membership site. It's a whole program for Phase 3. It's, it's completely structured, so this is not, like, I have a lot of Phase 3 blog posts. Those are free, but those are, you know, it's like general guidance, right? Like, oh, increase your calories gradually, leave out these food groups. This is a complete roadmap, like, here's the meal plan, here's the recipes, this is exactly what you eat, this portion size, and you can tweak it to fit you, too, just like Alexandra has, but... Um, Honestly, so many women are, are having like very stable P3s now because of having that structure. So yeah. it just takes away the stress. So and even even it's so helpful for maintenance. Like it's actually become a meal plan for me. Good. <laughs> well, I'm so glad because I you probably know this. I have more weeks coming. Did I tell you I just, that? So I think I saw the week four coming out, but I didn't know there were more. Oh yeah, no, actually okay. I'm a little bit disorganized, okay, because I wanted to get this program out in January of seven, 2017 so bad because I knew so many people would be starting HCG, and I was like, ah, I don't want to miss all these people that could stabilize, you know, and so it was such yeah. a rush, and, like, I do so many crazy things and too many projects at once, so <laughs> so as a result, like, my, my process for launching something was a little haphazard, so it's like some people that are in the P3 program know exactly everything they're getting, and some don't. <laughs> Some are just going to be pleasantly surprised with, like, all this extra stuff. <laughs> so, hey, you know, that's the best uh, best option yeah, there, right? Like, so, under promise, over delivery. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's if you're going to mess up, mess up on that side. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so some of the current people coming into the program right now, I think the way it's presented on my sales page is that it's just a three-week meal plan, and then that's kind of it. Um, but actually, the final program will be six weeks. And I decided to add a bonus seventh week um, as a bonus because later I think I'm going to have two versions of the program, one that's a little cheaper, one that costs a little more, and the one that costs more obviously will have like the full six weeks plus the seventh bonus week. But yeah. for everybody who's getting in like now, like you get, you'll get all of it for your price because I haven't updated the sales page. <laughs> I don't even know how to like divide the content yet. Like, so. Yeah, so there's going to be seven weeks of the recipes and meal plan. Um, in the end. And the other cool thing is I got this idea um, because someone talked about like sometimes you want to entertain, you know, yes. and when you're in yep. phase three or you're trying to be healthy, like what do I, what do I make or how do I entertain when I'm on P3, you know, so I'm going to have two entertaining menus um, where it's like a whole dinner that you could make and have for oh, friends nice. and family over and it will yeah. have the exact like macros and calories for if you eat the serving, and it's supposed to be more, like, festive, you know? Yeah. So I think it'll be fun. Um, I think that is a great idea. So we're having that come out, and then what I'm going to do is, for people in Phase 3, I'm going to have instructions for, hey, if you're going to be entertaining and having this meal, which will be a little higher calorie, obviously, because it's, but it's still going to work, and then you would eat a certain weight earlier in the day to kind of make it balance out. So Yeah. So that's so all that. So you'll get all that as it comes out. <laughs> that's awesome. So you get to have your cake and eat it, too. That's exactly. like the best. That's the dream. <laughs> yes, and there is even a cake in it. So, yeah. Stop. Yeah, I'm excited. It's still my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I could finish it all sooner. It takes a while, but. Yeah, good things take time, right? Yes, they do. So anyway, well, thank you so much for your time, Alexandra, and I hope things keep going well. And congratulations on being engaged. You thank you. Gotta, you. When are you getting married? Uh, we haven't set a date yet. Uh, we actually just got engaged last week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, congrats. Oh, I see you're married. Thank you. Mary. Thank you. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Cute. <laughs>
thing. Is there here. like a season that you guys think you would prefer to get married in, or not even sure about that? No, I think we're gonna wait about two years. Yeah. Uh, so that I can have some time to plan. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, the perfect everything. That's yeah. cool. Not freak out about it, hopefully. <laughs> well, that's really neat. You know, somebody that wants to make that commitment to you, that's really special. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he actually did the protocol once too, so. Did he? And <laughs> yeah. how did he do? Men, men, it's interesting, like. He lost like 20 pounds. Like really just fast, like, huh? So fast. Just so, know. like so fast. And that was around and that I was struggling. Attention, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was around I was struggling. So I was like, how in the hell? <laughs> yes. I know. Yeah, my husband, but, same thing. He did my first round with me because he hit, he's never been overweight his whole life, but I don't know what happened. He he gained a couple, like 20 pounds once. And so, yeah, he lost it all in the three weeks, like a pound a day. And it's just like, <sighs> going to kill but, you. You know, I'm so proud of his success and our success, really. But at the time, I was so frustrated. Of course. Yeah. No, of course, but, happy uh, for them. Yeah. It's just, it's just funny how it's different. Like the, the, the rate. Yeah, them. no, it's so sometimes different. they get away with more and well he was actually the one who brought up the green beans he was like that's off protocol and I was like what do you mean you're telling me I've done this before and then I tried it and it worked obviously you're like oh <laughs> that's funny that's really cool though that he did it because I found that like in general with guys they don't do well in the protocol unless they really care about losing weight because mm -hmm. it's hard, and so many guys just don't really care that they're a little overweight. You know, they're like, I still think I'm amazing. <laughs> like, they're like the dad bod is in right now. Calories, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he's re really been all about fitness until I started cooking for him. And, you know, <laughs> the meals that I was cooking at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, you're like, here's the more cupcakes. <laughs> yep, exactly. Or do you want an ice cream binge with me so I don't eat alone? Yeah, you know, so like... I have to fill that. <laughs> Overweight together. <laughs> so it's it's nice that you know I'm gonna have a partner that that understands the commitment to fitness and understands the commitment to health and is along for the ride with that, right? That like I'm, so, I'm very excited. It is true. It is very helpful. Yeah, I agree with that. I, my husband sometimes he's totally respectful of you know what I need to eat or not eat and you know but sometimes like he'll ask like oh if I make this do you want it? And I'm like, mm, I better not today. And he's always really polite about it. Like if you make chicken tacos, I'm just going to like gorge on five of them. I probably should. Because <laughs> I already ate two sandwiches earlier. <laughs> so, like let's do it tomorrow when I've had chicken breast for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me plan this out so exactly, it works with my yeah. macros. <laughs> <laughs> so you're too good at cooking, you know. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I better let you go, but okay. have a good day. And uh, the rest too. of you guys, if you want to see all the interview, the show notes for our interview, just go to the blog, hcgchica.com slash interviews. It will be under her show notes. Um, look at the episode number. I've stopped saying what it is on the thing because it changes. But, um, but yeah. So, all right, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.